Slovenly Peter. Strovel Peter. See this frowsy crater. Pa, it's Strovel Peter. On his fingers rusty, on his tow head musty, scissors seldom come. Let his talents grow a year, hardly ever comes his hair. Do any loathe him? Some. They hail him modern satire, disgusting Strovelpeter. The Story of Ugly Frederick Oh, Wally me, oh, Wally me, just such a boy I never did see. He caught the flies, poor helpless things, made hoppers of them minus wings. He killed the birds wherever he could, and catless made the neighborhood. And worst of all that he did do, he banged the housemaid black and blue. A dog stood drinking at a pump. The way he made that dog let jump. He sneaked upon him unaware. He whacked him here, he whacked him there. He whacked with all his might and main. He made him howl and dance with pain. Until overcome by woe and grief, the dog desiring some relief, did bite that brutal boy full sore, which made the latter prance and roar. And then the dog did grab the whip and with it homeward he did skip. To bed the boy had to go, and nurse his bite and wail his woe, the while the doctor healing brings and loads him up with drugs and things. And all this time the dog below sings praises soft and sweet and low over Frederick's dinner waiting there, for Frederick or for Frederick's hair. The dog's his hair and this estate that dog inherits and will ate. He hangs the whip upon the chair and mounts aloft and seats him there. He sips the wine so rich and red and feels it swimming in his head. He munches grateful at the cake and wishes he might never wake from this debauch while think by think his thoughts dream on and link by link the liver sausage <laughs> disappears and his hurt soul relents in tears. <laughs> the Sad Tale of the Matchbox Paulinchen was alone at home. The parents, they downtown did roam. As she now through the room did spring, all light of heart and soul a wing. She saw where sudden burst on sight, the things wherewith one strikes a light. Oh ho, says she, my hopes awake. Oh, what a plaything these will make. I'll rake them on the wall, hoo hoo, as off I've seen my mother do. And mince and mounts the catties lift up their little patties. They threaten with their pauses. It is against the losses. Meow, 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 meow. You'll burn yourself to ashes, oh! Paulinchen heard the catties not. The match did burn both bright and hot. It crackled gaily, sputtered free, as you in the picture see. Paulinchen waltzed and whirled and spun, <laughs> near mad with joy for what she'd done. Still mince and mounts the catties, lift up their little patties. They threaten with their pauses. It is against the losses. Meow, 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 drop it or you are ashes, oh! But ah, the flame had caught her clothes, her apron too and high arose, her hand is burned, her hair's afire, consumed is that child entire! And mince and mounts wild crying, the while the child was frying, they said, Come quick, oh sire, your darling child's afire! Meow, 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 she cinders, soot and ashes, oh! Consumed is all, so sweet and fair, the total child, both flesh and hair. A pile of ashes, two small shoes, is all that's left, and there no use. And mince and mounds sit sighing, with breaking hearts and crying. Meow, meow. How could we let the parents know? 
while round that ash pile glowing, in brooks their tears keep flowing. The Tale of the Young Black Chap There came a walking past the door, a coal pitch raven black young moor. The sun it smote him on his smeller, and so he hoisted his umbrella. Now came young Ludwig running by, a-waving he his flag on high, and Caspar flew to join the band, his toothsome pretzel in his hand. While in his wake skips William free, with hair neat combed and hoop, you see. <laughs> the three they laugh and scoff and wink and mock at that poor missing link, because his skin is black as ink. Forth step the mighty Nicholas, who hates rude ways and slang and sass, and brought his inkstand too, alas. Says he, You children, list to me. Pray let the little stranger be. He cannot help his sooty you. Bleach out at will. Be white like you. But still these urchins <laughs> lacking grace did scoff and laugh right in his face, and laughed yet heartier than before at that poor pitch black piteous moor. <laughs> Then Nicholas he did rave and rage, as per the picture on that page, and grabbed those urchins trembling there, by arm and crop and coat and hair, grabbed William first, and Ludwig next, and Caspar third, as per the text, and quicker than the three could wink, he soused them in the turbid ink, Soused them down with holy spite, soused them down with grim delight, soused them down clean out of sight. You see them here, all black as sin, much blacker than that nigger kin, the moor marching in the light, the ink blots following dark as night. Now if they had but hit their glee, they'd still be white and fair to see. THE TALE OF THE TERRIBLE HUNTER Behold the dreadful hunter-man in all his fateful glory stand. He took his game back, powder, gun, and fiercely to the fields he spun. Brer Rabbit spied him, smack and trim, and made the grossest fun of him. Full soon the sweat began to run, and mortal heavy grew his gun. He sought the sot, that green old boy, which filled the spy with evil joy. And as he dreamed and snored and slept, the furry rascal to him crept and stole his gun, and smooched his specks, and hide him hands with these effects. The specks he set across his nose, and as his joke upon him grows, he thinks it would be darling fun to see that hunter skip and run in front of his own stolen gun. He drew a bat, the hunter fled, and fled, and fled, and fled, and fled and howled for help as on his bed, howled as if to raise a dead. Our marsh and moor, through glad and dull, the awful claimer rose and fell, and in its course were past this flight, all life lay smitten dead with fright. At last the hunter struck a well, and in he plumped, with final yell, the very moment that there rang over all the place the loud shebang. The hunter's wife, with window up, sat sipping coffee from her cup. The bullet split the saucer clean and scared her to a pallid green. Now by the well in hiding lay the rabbit's child and saw the fray, and glanced a loftless aspect gay, and watchful of the coffee spray, 
and would have laughed, but changed his mind. When that hot coffee struck him blind, he snatched the spoon and capered out with many a baleful, murderous shout to clap to death the clumsy lout who'd brought his accident about. But when he saw it was his pa, he changed his mind again. Aha! Story of the Thump Sucker Conrad, cried his mama dear, I'll go out, but you stay here. Try how pretty you can be, till I come again. Docile be, and good and mild. Pray, don't suck your thumb, my child. For if you do, the tailor'll come, and bring his shares and snip your thumb. From off your hand, as clear as clean, as if of paper it had been. Before she'd turned the corner south, he'd got his thumbkin in his mouth. Bang! Here goes the door her slam. Whoop! The tailor lands her blam. Waves his shears, the heartless grap, and calls for doorman Luchabap. Claps his weapon to the thumb, snips it square as head of drum, while that lad his tongue unfurled, and fired a yell heard round the world. Who can tell that mother's sorrow when she saw her boy the morrow? There he stood, all steeped in shame, and not a thumpkin to his name. The Tale of Soupy Casper Young Casper, he was kernel sound, a flashy cup and barreled round. Had cheeks all rosy, red and fresh, was fond of soup, it added flesh. But finally, with scowling brow, he said he'd strike and make a row. No swill for me, I'm not a cow. I will not eat it, loathe it now. I can't, I won't, I shan't, I wow. A day rolled slowly over his head. Behold, his flesh began to shed. Yet still his strike he did maintain, and screamed as urged with might and main. No swill for me, I'm not a cow. I will not eat it, loathe it now. I can't, I won't, I shan't, I wow. The third day came, lo, once so sleek. Observe him now, how thin and weak. Yet still his flag he feebly flew, and hailed that humble dish anew. No swill for me, I'm not a cow. I will not eat it, loathe it now. I can't, I won't, I shan't, I wow. The fourth day came, and here you see, how doth this little busy bee. He weighed perhaps a half a pound, death came and tucked him in the ground. The Tale of Fuzzy Philip Philip, if it won't make you ill, try to sit a minute still. So in earnest tone and rough spake the father to his tough. While the mother's troubled glance prophesied a present dance when these two should get a start. And so it made her sick at heart to see the boy hadn't hurt his restive father's warning word. He jiggered and sniggered and juggled and boggled on his chair and skirmed galore. Philip, this doth irk me sore. See ya, darling little chaps, number two of Phil's mishaps. Observe the picture shows the fact. See, he tilts his chair aback. See, he's going, going, gone. Grabs the cloth and what's thereon? Sprawls heels upward on the floor. Dishes follow, crash and roar. Down they clash and plash and slash. Down come soup and cheese and hash. And under them the boy they mash. Father stares in consternation, can't size up the situation. 
while the mother's troubled glance notes fulfilled the promised dance. Philip's buried, hide and hair, naked stands the table there. All the family had for dinner decks the grave of that young sinner. Soup and sausage, wholesome bread, gone to hide that foolish head. Soup tureen is split in two. What shall they do? What shall they do? Frantic view, they this defeat. They've not a single bite to eat. The History of Hans Stare in the Air Now when this lad to school did go, he never saw what's here below. His eyes were always in the sky. Mong roofs and clouds and things that fly, he never saw along the street the common things about his feet. So people used to cry, Oh, there, that is Hans Stair in the air. There came a dog, a tearing by. Hans was gawking at the sky, just as calm as a ham. No one warned him with a yell. What befell? Whack, curb limb, and down they go. Boy and doglet in a row. Once he snooped along the strand with his atlas in his hand and his pack nose tilted back so he could watch the swallow's track and never got it through his gourd that he was walking overboard. Although the fishes frightened shout, We three are orphans, please look out. Another step, another yet and finds himself amazing wet. The fishy orphan, scared full sore, turned tail and traveled for the shore. Now by luck two men arrive, and with their hooks and sticks contrive the struggling dunderhead to hive, and soon they fish him out alive. Stands he now, the dripping bloke, and sees no humor in the joke. Water streams from hair and cloth and flows in rivers down his nose. He's water-soaked from head to heels, but can't express half what he feels. Those little fish go swimming by, and up at him they cock their eye and stick their heads out full a span and laugh as only fishes can. Laugh and giggle, jeer and snort. How strange to see them thus cavort. Meantime, the atlas, gone astray, has drifted many yards away. The Story of Flying Robert When the rain comes down a dash, When the storms the meadows lash, Boys and girls stay snuck at home, preferring to let others roam. But Robert thinks, Oh me, it's just the time outside to be. And so, umbrella safe and sound, takes to the fields and slops around. My! How shrieks the windy storm, and how the big tree bows its form. Ho ho! The umbrellas carve the breeze, and Robert sails above the trees. Above the houses, church and steeple, and out of sight of all the people. Above the clouds he spins at last. His hat is gone, and he's aghast. And so he sails, and sails, and sails, Through banks of murky clouds, and wails, And weeps and moans, poor draggled rat, Because he can't o'ertake his hat. Oh, where on high can that hat be? When you find out, pray, come tell me.